It's another day in quarantine and I thought that today would be a great opportunity to have a little coffee chat with you guys. So without further ado, welcome to The Wake and Shake. I am an openly gay man, but I've had an on again, off again relationship for about the past 15 years with a beautiful black woman named Caffeine. My whole family has had a dependence on coffee. I remember when I was a kid, like once the caffeine wore off, everyone would just go to bed. It's like, oh, bedtime's at 2.30 p.m. today. It was kind of like the buckets from Willy Wonka, just five corpses all piled into one bed. Really just a sight to see. My mom used to be like, Steven, go to the factory. It's like, stop referring to Dunkin' Donuts as a factory. It's not a good look, Sharon. Coffee is one of those substances where it's conducive to being productive in society, so there's no shame in this addiction, but I hope there are some other coffee drinkers out there, some other drug addicts, if you will. No one likes being called that, but let's be honest, the tagline on my Newman's Organic Bag, making the world better, not making the world a better place through some philanthropic effort, but literally distorting your perception of the world, making it seem better. And you know what distorts your perception? Drugs. I don't know. I don't know if it's actually a drug, but it makes me feel damn good. And uh, it's not so bad for my body. There's a lot worse I could be doing to get this high. This is all I need these days. I don't even drink alcohol all that much, but I will tell you this, I've had enough coffee and then getting behind the wheel of a car and it's like, what's the difference? Like I am essentially driving under the influence right now. So it still is Corona season. We have a Corona fashion week coming up. Everyone wearing their masks, masks for masks and masks for femmes. It's really a, a paranoid time to be alive. They're saying that it's gonna peak this week. So I feel like the, uh, the collective consciousness is at an all time, uh, all time low energetically and all time high in terms of fear and paranoia. Even when I was walking down the street, I saw my old boss and I just darted across the road away from him. This is back in January, but you know, the point stands. This is just how life is these days. I'm actually supposed to have a date this week, but I don't even know if I want to risk it. You know, I do have a California King bed and about six feet worth of intimacy issues. So we could swing it, but do I really want like his lips to be the last thing that it touches my mouth before I get hooked up onto a ventilator? I don't know. There's just, there's a whole new level of paranoia going around. I view every human being now as like my personal enemy. Is this going to be the person that kills me? Or is it going to be this woman? Or is this, this old lady with a dog? Is she my killer? Who knows? Uh... I don't know how to actually protect from the virus. I feel like just putting on a mask and gloves really isn't going to do the trick. It's more of a, a numbers game and the unlucky people that come in contact with it, for better or for worse, I'm not sure how much uh, protective covering can really prevent your odds of, of getting it. I feel like if I maybe engulf myself in like a burqa, for example, that would probably be the, the best way to go about it. Perhaps like a, a bed sheet, just Casper it down Hollywood Boulevard for the day. I don't know. I could see myself actually getting into like the whole burqa lifestyle. My friends are like, yeah, Steve's still wearing his burqa and praying towards Mecca five times a day, but uh, Corona's been gone for about three years. Um, so I just moved to a, a new area. I'm in Burbank, Burbank, which is, which is the valley of Los Angeles. And there's definitely, one thing I've noticed is there's a lot, lot less homeless people. I'm sorry, that's, that's so wrong to say. A lot fewer homeless people here. But I was actually on the other side over in Hollywood, like just the other day. And I've noticed that these encampments of homeless, like under like the freeways usually, they're getting so expansive and elaborate that I swear these guys have like two and three bedroom tents now. They have like living rooms, they have like water views, aquatic center, aerobics. They really have like the best deal going because apparently 
you can just set up shop wherever you want and there's no consequences in this city. So I've really started having like less empathy for them. So when I, when I give them money now, like I'll give them a 10 and be like, yo, can I get nine back? Like they don't need it. I need the money more than they do these days. Like let's be for real. Being single during the quarantine is definitely like pretty difficult. If you're in a relationship, I'm sure this is like a nice romantic time for you. You can just get, get all cocooned and cuddle with each other. And especially if you're in a relationship with someone who can't be trusted, it's like you're living your best life right now. They can't go out and cheat. No one's gonna meet up with them. You should really appreciate what you have here. This is gonna push back all that infidelity to at least the summer. But I am craving like that human interaction and like that attention you know how like a newborn baby will die if it's not given attention? It's pretty much where I am right now. Like I don't have TV, I don't really have Wi-Fi. All I've been doing the past the time is like I dust off my old thesaurus and that's just like superfluous to be doing that. It's just, it's not me. Uh, I have been watching like a few documentaries. So I've been watching one about like the Federal Reserve. It's interesting to learn that they named it that in a very deceptive fashion because it's actually neither federal nor reserve. It's not a government entity and they actually don't have any reserves of money. It's kind of just created out of thin air. And it's really uh, intriguing to find out that there is one family in particular that owns more than half of the wealth of the world. I find that like unbelievable and like most people don't know that. And the even more shocking thing that I learned is that it's Honey Boo Boo's family. It's just like hiding in plain sight. It's crazy. I feel like I've become like a history buff as of late. Like I have a newfound interest in learning about history, but I'm learning like the real version of it, like the unedited like NC-17 version of history. Like as a kid, when you're learning about like the history of the world in the United States, like you take your little trip to to Washington and see see the White House and you learn about the legislative branch and the executive branch and the judicial branch and the Michelle branch. I'm asking, where are the reptilians at? You know? I want to get into this like nitty gritty. I want the twists. I want the twists and turns that make the picture of the world way more exciting and way more real. So my advice to all of the mainstream news organizations Worry less about the Republicans and more about the reptilians because what I've been seeing is that these off-planet creatures have actually played a role in uh, our society and the way we run our world for many thousands of years. And it's, you guys can have your own theories on it. I've done like quite a bit of research and if you even look at like ancient cultures like from Mesopotamia to like Central America, ancient Chinese cultures all over Europe, all throughout Africa, there's artifacts and like hieroglyphs and statues of these like reptile looking entities that were like living amongst the civilization. I don't think they, these like cultures, these peoples were just like, oh, they were just, they were tripping on some mushrooms and their imagination got the best of them. No, I think they were accurately depicting what was going on and Reptile-like hybrids were, were walking the earth, like, openly. Now they're back in the closet, you know? We're not so different after all. My brothers and I, like, have this ongoing joke that my mom is gonna end up just dating a reptilian. She's had, like, such bad luck dating with guys at her age that she's just gonna, like, give in and date a reptilian. She's gonna come home one night and be like, you know, Stevie, Rex is very worldly and very well-traveled. I mean, he just gets me and he has a huge appetite. I'm like. Whatever makes you happy, Sharon. I've also been learning about uh, this guy who calls himself a galactic historian. He basically can tap into what is known as the Akashic Records. It's the history of the sentience of the Earth throughout like millions and millions of years. And the Akashic Records includes every moment of existence that has existed, is existing, and can exist. So he can like get into this higher ethereal state and tap into all of this knowledge at will. It's a gift that he says that we all have. He just has like a stronger connection and he, he's really uh, harnessed it in a way where he can get into it very, very easily. And I've, 
I've been interested in trying to develop that skill within myself and I've been meditating and I just find it like very challenging to kick the thoughts out and actually focus. So I actually found a workaround and I got my Akashic Records. I got a copy of it from the DMV. So there's uh, many different paths in spirituality and that's the one I took. They say that we are ascending, we're going into a new earth and that we're going to a more quasi-physical a blending of a physicality with spirituality. And it's exciting to me for a lot of reasons, but most of all, like I've accepted the odds that I'm gonna get famous in third density where we are now, it's like, that's a long shot. But being a celebrity in fourth density could be earlier to the party and I could, uh, could use that to my advantage. I might be like all of a sudden doing like club, club appearances and like fourth density nightclubs. I might leak my fourth density sex tape if that's what it takes. I don't know. I've already like started thinking of activities to do like with my family. Like once I've ascended to fourth density and like they still haven't yet, you know, like just like fun stuff to keep us all like united. Hide and see, capture the flag. You know, everyone evolves at at different rates, and that's okay. In all seriousness, though, like I've been thinking about like having these. Uh, higher density powers, telekinesis, teleportation, instant manifestation. I've gotten really excited about the idea of having these, but then I like, I wonder like, the person I am now, like what would I actually reasonably use those powers for? Teleporting out of situations I'm uncomfortable in, undressing people, like I don't deserve those yet. Like I deserve to be in like lower third density in like a molasses state as it is now, cause I'm not there yet. They say that we're gonna have like extraterrestrial disclosure like in our lifetimes. Like the, the window I, I've heard is like 2028 to 2032, we will know for a fact that like other life exists off the planet and they will come in contact with us openly. And I think that actually makes a lot of sense. We are in this like ball floating through space and to think there's nothing more than what's going on in our like little ecosystem is quite frankly, like really ignorant. I'm trying to like continue to live my life without being like, I want it to happen, I want it to happen. But at this point, like, I really want to get ET, but I will even settle for Access Hollywood if that's what it takes. And they say the reason why they won't, they won't land right now is because like we operate on a frequency that's much lower than theirs. And that if we were in face-to-face -face contact with them, with the disparity in their very, very high frequency, we will actually like go into psychosis because our bodies and minds can't handle like the massive, massive shift in energy. So that's why they say now, your time on earth as a human and this like age of transformation, it's all about raising your vibration, raising your frequency, transforming negative beliefs, following your excitement, following your passion, doing what you love to do, being in that loving, expansive, creative space as much as possible. A lot of people uh, deal with anxiety and depression. Like I never have, but like I stubbed my toe once. Like I'm sure that's like similar to like being chronically depressed. No, like of course I've experienced it before, you know? But the best way to actually transform these uh, negative emotions is to like start with beliefs. Like you can feel, you can feel like sorrow or you can feel depressed or feel really anxious or uneasy. But if you ask yourself, what would I have to believe is true about myself to feel this way? You can start uncovering like the beliefs of what you actually view yourself and how you actually view like your world. Cause it all starts with beliefs before it gets to like thoughts and then it gets to feelings. But if we go sh straight to the source, to the beliefs and realize that like all beliefs are like changeable and fleeting, like even the belief that beliefs are changeable. You could have a belief that's like, you can't change your beliefs. Like I'm just this loser and I can't change, I can't change that. Like I know about these spiritual concepts and I know that I can, I, everything's coming from my beliefs, but I can't change that. It's like, even that's a belief. It's like this layer upon layer of like scraping back to figure out like your core beliefs that are actually like manifesting your reality all around you. So that's really what it's all about. And then once you can work through those beliefs, you find out like what really makes you come alive. And then you do more and more and more of that. I really think that's, that's the key to 
finding the happiness and the fulfillment that a lot of us seem to be lacking. And for, for gay people in particular, I mean, you hear about like this disease that's been attributed to the gay community. I don't know if you've heard of it, basic bitchery. There's a disease, it's called AIDS, and it's kind of been bestowed upon the gay community. Like it's been designated to us, like this is the disease that predominantly the gay men get. And they have this whole, all this rhetoric and this reason why, you know, it comes from this and transmission of this and that. It's like, okay, we can look at that science and we can accept that science, but we need to take a step further and think about what actually is an immune system. It's an energetic barrier that's like protecting us. And we know that again, that's all based on like our vibration and our beliefs. If you're someone who's been like bullied and beat down and made to feel like ashamed and you really have this like negative energy stewing in you, of course you're gonna have like a deficit like in your immunity. You're gonna feel like you're not protected. You're gonna feel like exposed and that the world is an unsafe, dangerous place. And then it might eventually manifest in the form of a disease. I don't believe there's such thing as like a chronic disease like AIDS that you can catch. Like your body can eventually take on a, a toll, an energetic uh, beat down, if you will, and you can eventually die from it. But I believe at any moment, like you can energetically turn things around. And I don't feel like people are on board with that way of thinking yet. Even on these like dating apps for, for gay guys, you don't see this anywhere else, but it's like you go on a gay dating app and it's like, what's your height? What's your hair color? Is your immune system failing yet? Let's wait to the second date to talk white blood cell count. All right, chief. But it's, you go to a doctor's office, you just look at the culture all around. And it's like, get on prep, get on Descovy, take this. We have to beat this disease. It's like, how about we start like with how we need to love ourselves and we need to figure out why there's like this energetic creation of a lack of immunity. We need to take it from that bigger space instead of just focusing on like symptoms of things. So maybe if anything good comes from the coronavirus situation, it's that we can look at disease, dis-ease from a whole new perspective and we can move towards a an area of more light and more knowledge of how our bodies work and how there's a connection like spiritually and energetically of everything we experience. Just a thought. I've actually been doing like a intestinal cleanse. It's, ha it's kept me in the bathroom most, most hours of the day. That, that's okay though. Uh, I've been doing a, a cleanse because I read that like a lot of uh, childhood trauma and negative memories can be stored on like the linings of your intestines and it can even block the absorption of nutrients. There's always like a, there's always like a psychological components, like every physicality of your body. So the gastrointestinal system needs to be detoxified. And I've been doing that over the last few days and I've already started feeling lighter and I'm feeling like just cleaning out that area. I can let go of things that I wouldn't even necessarily been aware of that were holding me back. Like up until this point, I used to go to like summer camps around here and like get all the kids by the campfire and I would read them scary stories like from my intestines. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe they all called you a faggot. I'm like, yeah, good night kids, pass the marshmallows. Uh, I've been trying like a bunch of different stuff in addition to that. I've been giving Amazon way too much of my business just supplementing my life with, with supplements. I tried CBD. I found it to be uh, very uh, overpriced, at least like the one I got, it was like $100 for like a tincture. I didn't, I didn't feel like enough of an effect to really continue to use it. CBD is analogous to someone saying, dude, why have a beer when you can just have the yeast? You know, it didn't, it didn't get me all the way there. And I've also been uh, drinking monoatomic gold. So for anyone who thinks that I've changed since moving to LA, I haven't. Still Steve from the block, but now I drink gold. Gold actually has a, uh, a lot of like valuable properties to like supercharge DNA and like balance atmospheres. A lot of people don't know that. They usually just like wear it as ice or wear it as like decorative jewelry. But gold is actually like well sought after 
from like many different like civilizations throughout time as a way of like balancing their atmosphere. And I even read there's like a origin story of human beings and they were, were actually created by this other civilization called the Anunnaki because they came down to the earth and they needed, they needed another species to mine for gold for them to bring back to their planet and balance out the atmosphere. So we see this like all throughout our culture that like gold is like highly valued but when we think of it, we're like, no, it's just because we, it like, it's shiny and it's it used to back money. And we just think it's valuable because we've, we've said it's valuable, just how like diamonds are, or these fancy cars or champion sweatshirt, but gold actually like from an alchemist point of view, it actually like innately carries like the power to like create worlds. And I really think that's where it all came from. So long story short, I'm drinking it. Uh, I don't know if all of these things are actually going to come to fruition, if they're actually going to happen. And I try to be honest with myself. It's like, do I want this to happen? Because I want this like spiritual growth and I want like the human race to get to the next level and have like a cosmic awakening partially, but I think more so it's can be simply boiled down to, I don't want to get a job. I just don't want to do it. And I'm not someone who is lazy like at all. I've worked jobs since I was 12 years old. I used to be a janitor at the middle school in my town. My, my brother and I used to do it. I used to call him Goodwill Hunting. I used to say he's just like him, except he can't solve any of the math problems on the board. I mean, even since I moved to LA, I've done everything within my power to make money and support myself. I used to be a, a server at a bunch of different restaurants, but I never really could like get passionate about the menus. Like the, I found the language is like so over the top and flowery. Are outrageous potato skins. It's like, what is so shocking about the skin of a potato? It's like the N word written inside with chives, like a scallion swastika. Try our famous meatball hero. It's like, I don't recall any meatballs running into tower one on that day in 2001. I don't remember. And that, it just, as a server, it just literally turned me into a liar. The orange juice was freshly squeezed two weeks ago in Florida. You gotta try the meatballs. They're just like grandma used to make them. If your grandmother happened to work the assembly line at the Cisco factory. And then we had to call like mayonnaise aioli now. It's like, when did this happen? Like, when did mayonnaise like jump on the casting couch and come out as aioli? Like just a few years ago, mayo was picking up like last minute night shifts at BK just to get by. Now it's like this fancy substance that everyone wants. Everyone wants. Mustard's like, I have no gag reflex. Can we work something out? <clears throat> okay, I think the, uh, the coffee's starting to wear off and you know what that means? It's, it's almost time for bed. Uh, so I guess final takeaway guys, we're gonna get through this Coronavirus can be a horrible, horrifying, scary, paranoid time, or it can be an opportunity to reflect, grow, change paths, figure out what you actually want out of life. Perhaps like this disruption to your schedule makes you realize, hey, like I don't wanna to go to an office anymore. I can be entrepreneurial. I can use my creativity to support me. And we can use this as a way to usher in a new, a new society a new way of life where people are actually utilizing their talents and doing what they love to do. And we can kind of raise everyone's frequency all together. And honestly, when we look back on 2020, once this is all said and done, I think we're gonna say, whatever happened to Kobe?